Anton Kruger. Anton est un écrivain sud-africain. Il a grandi dans une famille germanophone et anglophone. Il parle l'afrikaans, mais écrit principalement en anglais. You write in English, mainly. Il est professeur associé à l'université de Rhodes en Afrique du Sud, où il enseigne l'étude de l'écriture théâtrale, des performances et de l'écriture performique. Dans son travail d'écriture, il aime innover et expérimenter de nouvelles formes et de nouveaux genres. Il est auteur dramatique, essayiste, poète et romancier. Il a écrit deux livres d'essais sur le théâtre en Afrique du Sud qui ont tous deux été récompensés par des prix. Il a publié un roman, un mémoire, un recueil de poésie, un manifeste, un recueil de nouvelles et un grand nombre de pièces pour le théâtre et pour la radio. Au cours de, des deux dernières années, il a créé plusieurs spectacles et performances basées sur l'improvisation du texte en direct, des projets scéniques incluant des collaborations avec des musiciens improvisant leurs partitions musicales en lien avec le texte créé. À l'Avigny, il travaille sur un nouveau roman dont le sujet est l'intelligence artificielle et développe également, parallèlement, une collection de textes courts inspirés des œuvres de la collection du musée de la Route à Lausanne. Thank you for being here, and thank you to Sophie and Lavigny for this incredible place, and it's just been quite amazing, and for her wonderful spirit and enthusiasm and liveliness and helpfulness, and also for <laughs> us, we've been having a wonderful time here. <clears throat> so I'm going to read something from a collection that's coming out next year. It's an anthology called This Mortal Body, and it's a number of writers in different genres, including Eike Kroch, who was here, I believe she's written a poem for it, but there's, there's also a well-known musician who's doing a journalistic piece, there's talking from health, and there's from a spiritual tradition, but a whole variety of things around uh, that topic, This Mortal Body. My contribution had to do with improvisation and um, experimenting with the, the mortal body of writing. Um, well, I'll read you the full title. It became quite a, a mess, just a lot of stuff. <laughs> but the, the full title reads, 21 Fragments, Improvisations on the Mortal Body of Writing, including epigrams, notes, quotes, journal entries, beginnings of possible essays, middle bits, transcripts of dialogue, and an idea for a performance piece and a poem. I'm going to read a few extracts, not all of it. So number one, two epigrams. For the record, speech is writing, writing speech. That is the lesson the body wants to hear with every word it reads. That's from Bob Perelman's Alphabet of Literary History. The second epigram was not a text piece, it was something I saw or heard the Tibetan Lama Chogyam Trungpa telling Allen Ginsberg, the beat poet in the 70s, he said to him, why do you need to write, why do you go on stage with a piece of paper? Why do you need to write your poems down? Don't you trust your own mind? <laughs> was a challenge he put to him. Number two, preamble one. I fail to write an essay, yet between the spaces of the unwritten may be fleeting glimpses of images, ideas, trying to wrestle dream out of hypnagogic state. Two, three, preamble two, look seriously, I've been struggling with this essay for a very long time. I've now asked so many extensions of the long-suffering editors, 60 pages of fragments, false starts, what I'm writing here likely to be another. I'm finally giving up. The topic is too big. Mortality. This yawning maw of the never-ending nothing. The other side of being. The other shore which can't be seen from this one. The lack which can't be filled. Which swallows words which by definition cannot be defined. Endless, bottomless, beginningless. Can it be represented by a blank page? By an absence taking on the challenge, trying embodying this lack in material symbols, scratchings, housing, sounds, ideas, shapes, framing aspirations. I keep making notes and more notes, trying to bring it to heel. Can I improvise my way out of this? The editing must happen. It's happening now. Four, preamble three. 
I've been here before, the end of a frustrating process, abandoning the riverbanks, channeling the mind stream to conclusion and rather working the edges of fragments. Five, how to be evasive about writing, about speaking. I'd originally thought to offer an essay reflecting on the nature of improvisation in poetry, bringing back the body in performance. This would have been more conventional, well-researched, heavily referenced article drawing on the lineage of performance in poetry from Dada to Beats to Nsormi traditions and so forth. It would have included all encompassing quotations such as, and I quote, writers of the 1950s developed literary practices like abstract expressionist paintings sought both to endow the medium itself, in this case the written language with a voice, and to engage the whole body of the writer. And, another quote, in his essay Projective Verse, Charles Olson emphasizes the importance of the breath as opposed to a metrical pattern as the basis for a poetic unit. Unquote. And for David Anton, simply reading a poem is like returning to the scene of the crime. You try to reenact it, and the more you try to bring it back to life, the deader it becomes. Unquote. It's interesting, right? And I gathered a lot of this material around the topic, and as a sort of article I myself would have really enjoyed reading, but it also felt in some way an evasion, this historicization, a way of avoiding the experience itself, a way of justifying an embodied lineage by putting it into this text, pretending text itself isn't as mortal as the spontaneous, time-bound voice. I wanted to start from zero. <laughs> Seven, body of writing versus body of performance. For 15 years, I've given my writing students an open essay topic on text and performance encouraging them to be curious about where these might meet. There's a bold contradiction between Jacques Derrida, who sees text as primary, il n'y a pas de ors de texte, and Richard Schechner, who says, for example, I want to update Derrida, say the basic is embodied behavior, the language is derivative from embodied behavior. We had bodies before we had language, we were primates, apes, before we were human, before we had this larynx. So for me, speech is a specialized kind of embodied behavior, not the other way around. So that's interesting, if you're interested in who wins the origins race, and if there can be only one. Adrian Heathfield, also says something the opposite of Derrida, i.e. quoting how outside the writer's language is in relation to the event. Heathfield vents forth nostalgically. How lacking in that which turn, would turn inside, making the thing flow and burn, touch and weigh again. How utterly significant, unique, unforgettable the event. How lost it is. All that one can do is proceed inside this tear, vibrate at the borders of memory. Posing the question, can writing be a way of vibrating? Eight, then there's improvisation. Performance improvisation records nothing. Improvisation is the momentary liberation of Beckett's crap feeding him from his tapes, from his obsession with recording everything, 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 nine, more notes and quotes. What does it mean to prepare? What does it mean to meet, to encounter, in a place at the same time? Ten, a gaggle of quick quotes. Composing, writes Arnold Schoenberg, is slowed down improvisation. The Zen calligraphic painter Alok Su Quang Han says, beauty is that which is unrepeatable. Mm -hmm. Number 11, next heading. If we take our bodies too seriously, <coughs> we're bound for disappointment. They're going to change, get old, sick, die. Our shadow follows. With the process of change. One thing improvisation shows is there are no nouns. Everything is in process. 
Nothing is fixed. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is solid. The body of text gives this illusion of stability. As with mortal bodies, it ages, weathers, fades like paint on a canvas, whitening into emptiness. Bleached bones awaiting eventual void. Are we ready to approach this openness? Twelve, on death. Zen monk Anthony Osler says death opens us up, helps us stay with our experience, helps us turn to face it, allows kindness to unfurl. He talks about the Roshi who loved funerals, preferring them to weddings. The Roshi says, with a wedding, you don't know what's going to happen. Will they be happy? Will they stay together? Who knows? But death is clear, no doubt. Everybody cries, everybody waves, bye-bye. And Anthony cried when he spoke a few days after the Archbishop Desmond Tutu departed. The world of dew is the world of dew, and yet, and yet, from Kobayashi Isa, Whoever knows the body is like foam, has learned its nature is mirage. From the Dhammapada. Einmal ist keinmal. Who is this temporary self? Shoring up this shadow, suppressed side we don't want others to see. Wallpapered over like trauma. You weren't really hurt, really violated, doesn't count. You wanted your body to be the mountain your spirit possesses, hoping the real you is the dragon guarding its hoardings, the treasure of your own preciousness. Does it apply to bodies of work, bodies of text, corporeality, whatever is compounded, falls apart still, and ideas, reified concepts with material pages, or the books in which they stored, and yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, this remarkable thing that our body of text can outlive the mortal breathing body. Text also breathing, also oxygenating, decaying, giving way. And I'll jump to the end note, number 21. This pleasure ends in publication. Celebration of completeness also loss. Reading at book launches, find myself inevitably pen in hand, you can see a sense of frustration, <laughs> seeing what more could have been whittled away. Maybe it's not too late to call the editor, and the next edition will be better, surely. I can't stop editing. But the moment of creation, the act of writing, the space of dreaming, thinking, feeling, that's where something is really happening. And that endless, infinite possibility of whatever it is could come from nothing. It's alive. Publication feels losing infinite things that could have been written, right up to the last draft, the last proofread, there's hope. <laughs> the process is en route. Publication of a text, liturgy, for the moment of writing. <laughs>